Hello and welcome to worship for Northminster United Church. It is good to be together from near and far and we thank you for worshiping with us today. We have lit the Christ candle, naming Jesus as a life-giving, gracious, inspiring presence in our relationship with God. We also acknowledge with gratitude that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. I invite you now to watch our Threshold Moment video so you can prepare yourself in your hearts and minds for our worship today. The spiritual part of ourselves is a divine abyss. It is a dimension that is not touched by words, thoughts, ideas, and feelings. Our bodies were made for perceiving the beauty of the world, a flower, a kiss, a stunning and vibrant green hillside, or a newborn baby. And yet all the art in the world cannot capture exactly what it feels like to experience the divine nature of these things. The path of unknowing is to both savor what the senses can take in, but also wonder at the mystery of unfathomable depths of even a single atom. I now invite you to a time of prayer. 
Divine Goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment, bear us up in this time, hold us for eternity. We revel in your wondrous works. We grasp for adequate ways to sing our praise. We seek to be lost in your beauty, and all the people say, Amen. Alleluia! Praise the name of Yahweh. Sing praise, you who serve the Most High, who stand in the house of Yahweh, in the courts of God's house. Alleluia! God is good. Sing praises to God's name, because it is beautiful. Yahweh, your name stands forever. Your fame is told from one generation to the next. For you do justice for your people, and you have compassion for your faithful. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. There is never a breath on their lips. Their makers will come to be like them, and so will all who trust them. House of Israel, bless Yahweh. Priests of the temple, bless Yahweh. Attendants of the sanctuary, bless Yahweh. You who revere Yahweh, bless Yahweh. Blessings from Zion upon Yahweh, who dwells in Jerusalem. Alleluia. In the scripture verses we just heard from Psalm 135, we hear Yahweh, our God, being praised to the highest. But we also hear the words about idolatry, the practice of worshiping physical idols, such as statues, as a god. The idols may have eyes, ears, and mouths, but they cannot see, hear, or speak. The Psalm says that in trusting only those by their hands create idols, we risk becoming like them. It becomes a false worship in a sense. Because God is not physically seen or heard, we are being asked to believe in our God by experiencing Him in our thoughts, actions, and prayers. We still use our senses and imagery of God, what He may sound like and look like, but there are deeper ways to connect. This, the lesson this week helps us to strengthen our belief in God's goodness. During the past few Sunday services, we have been listening to a series of reflections titled Beguiled by Beauty introducing us to ideas of how to embrace the beauty that surrounds us, to be more compassionate and perhaps become a more contemplative person. It is interesting to note the word beguiled. In the title of this series, what connotation does beguiled mean to you? Could it be charmed by or enchanted with? If one looks at the definition of beguiled in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it originally meant to lead by deception or trickery in the 13th to 15th centuries. It wasn't until the mid-19th century that it became more of an adjective, indicating that something was enjoyable. I'm sure that we would like to believe that this is the latter definition, which is the intent of this series, to draw us into enjoying the beauty of the world. The words in the title of today's reflection are abyss, mystery, and wonder. Let us consider the word abyss. What likely comes immediately to mind for most of us is that an abyss is literally a deep, bottomless chasm or hole. But we can also think about an abyss figuratively. A divine abyss could be described as the spiritual part of our being which holds no concrete word or thought, but rather a place where we can go fully to experience and absorb the mystery and wonder of the world around us. It becomes a special place to each one of us and can take different forms. Have you ever experienced difficulty in describing something you have seen or done that words just don't seem to relay the feeling that you had at the time? An example might be our universe of stars and planets. What words can describe the mystery and wonder of what lies out there? 
Another might be climbing a mountain. When you reach the summit, I would imagine it is hard to find words, words to describe the feeling of accomplishment or the expansive views that you are taking in. This wordlessness is at the heart of the concept of divine goodness. As quoted by Dr. Farley, the author of Beguiled by Beauty, the unknowing could be a bright, dark abyss where we get lost in wonder. Think about those opposing words, a bright but yet dark abyss. I liken it to the saying, light at the end of the tunnel. There is always hope and more to discover. Our physical bodies were created to be able to sense the beauty around us. The smell of a beautiful flower, the feeling of a tender touch, the vision of a beautiful valley or lake, or the sound of young children playing together. But how each of us experiences these things lead us in our own way to truly feel God's presence. Perhaps exploring the mystery of our own divine abyss will help us become more prayerful and contemplative, deepening our consciousness of the physical beauty that is around us. Not only can our awareness be heightened of what we can see, but also what we can feel when we dance or sing or play a musical instrument. Love, compassion, and social justice are the fruits of loving God. Cruelty, conceit, and arrogance, selfishness, and hostility toward creation suggest that we are worshiping an idol. The world today seems to be in a constant state of crisis. All forms of media, including visual and print, are relaying information that is overwhelming to our senses. Climate change seems to have taken a back seat to COVID-19. But now the topic of anti-racism and police force in dealing with certain peoples are subject to massive crowd protests and demonstrations. Can we not listen to each other with compassion and thoughtfulness rather than hearing the angry words and chants that draw people into the fray? Not only are forms of human protests increasing, Mother Earth is also telling us something. The floods, earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, and forest fires seem to me to be more plentiful this past year. Is it the beauty and wonder that surround us? Is it being forgotten? Or is it that we realize in its destruction how much we appreciate it? By opening ourselves up to a divine goodness, we can only then love the world more passionately and treat each other with kindness. When we love and care for the world, we increase our mindfulness of the godly reality. To be more contemplative requires being aware of our moods and dispositions. It is not easy to change thoughts and actions that have become habitual, but we can gradually reshape them so that our capacity for empathy, appreciation, and joy will feel liberating and enable us to see the humanity in all people. As you reflect on what words mystery and wonder mean to you, I would like to repeat the opening prayer as it echoes the theme of today's reading. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for a moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We revel in your wondrous works. We grasp for adequate ways to sing our praise. We seek to be lost in your beauty, and all the people say, Amen. Just these waters, endless seas. Do 
During this time of prayer, if you would like to share a prayer of concern or thanks for yourself or someone, or a situation in the world, please type them into the comments at any point so that all others who are watching can take time to read your prayer and lift it up to God. This time in prayer invites us to an eyes open experience of looking around. Try keeping your eyes open as we pray. Look around and find something to focus on. It may be a detail that you have rarely seen or something you see frequently, but now you see it more deeply. Or you may let your gaze wander during prayers as a way of giving thanks for these surroundings. Let us pray. Circle us, God. Circle us with the light of your presence within this world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear. Enable us to be conquerors of despair. Enable us to become that which you would dream for us. God of creation, circle us with the light of your presence. Circle us, God. Circle our families and friends with the shelter, within the shelter of your outstretched arms. Protect them in a moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. God of creation, Circle our families and friends within the light of your presence. Circle us, God. Circle this world with the joy of your never-ending love. Where there is sickness and pain, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is injustice and oppression, bring release. God of creation, circle this world with the light of your presence. We pray these words in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day 
our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. On behalf of Northminster Community, we thank you for your generosity as you continue to faithfully give the present to the present and future ministry of our congregation. Thank you for the gifts dropped off at the church, donations made through our website, and those who are giving through PAR and Tithely. Let us bless all the expressions of our faith. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring the gifts of our lives so that the news of your love will be shared in this world. Receive them as a symbol of all we seek to do and be. Direct us to use these offerings for your glory and the well-being of all. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us together here this morning. We continue to be the church in all the ways that are possible. Please take time to read the weekly emails from the church so you know how we can support you and how you can keep in touch. Our blessing. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found. And may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Peace be with you. And as we end our time together, enjoy this video and be in awe of God's creation. Bye for now. Oh,